So today is the day, today is the day I make one of those right there behind me for Hudson and Holly's tractor. I'm gonna start with just making one. It's gonna be a challenge. It's probably gonna take me a few videos to get it done. It'll probably take me about two or three days in total, but we're gonna make one. I'm gonna try and literally mimic this one, just maybe a little smaller, kind of a lot smaller actually. But it's really gonna be the same setup. I'm gonna do two tires in the back. I'm gonna do a beam across and a beam that ties to their tractor. And I'm gonna try and do it with a weed eater. That is my, my thought process. I'm gonna do an electric weed eater and I'm gonna try and put like a switch or the handle to turn on the weed eater up front. And I'll run the wires for the weed eater down to the back and maybe mount one or two heads that spin inside there. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we're gonna figure it out together. I'm excited to get started. I got some parts in the truck. I don't have everything. So I'm gonna go grab that. I don't have the weed eater yet. I'm trying to find a special one I have a good one in mind that I think will work that I might be able to dually hook up. It's kind of my plan. But uh, today I want to at least get the tires, the frame built. I want to do literally like the same setup this thing has right here too, where it's got the cover with the plastic hanging down front. I think that's a good way to keep it safe. Nothing flies back at the kids. I don't know if I'll make it work in raise or lower. Maybe, maybe we could do some sort of a uh, Mechanical hand raise on the back where it has like a lever you set it on to go lower or you pick it up to go higher That's gonna be stuff we learn together. So let's go grab all the materials and get started So as with most of these projects that I do for the kids tractors There's always one main thing I try and avoid and that's weight because these tractors do not like heavy things They just don't work well the batteries will die it overheats They'll sit there and spin so we got to be very very cautious on how much this weighs so the metal frame I think I'm gonna go with is a Perlin style metal. We have a four inch right here, as you see. It's slightly thicker though than this six inch that I have right down here. So I'm, the reason I like this Perlin is because the bottom, so I'll, I'll kind of show you, let's see. So this will be the, the style that I use. It has an open on the bottom, which I like because I can use that to run the wires for the weed eater. That'll be the uh, mower inside easy access to it you won't see it i can really close it off if i wanted to also um and it's really really lightweight it's really not it's not too heavy at all and it's big enough and it's bulky enough to where i think it'll make it look like a real authentic hay mower um, so i think that's what i'm gonna go with i think i'm gonna do the six inch though i think the six inch will look nicer it's a little bigger and it might be a little more weight but i think it's gonna work so that i think let's load this six inch up get it back to the farm over there Let's get some measurements. Uh, we're gonna attach the wheels today. I'll put the tongue on this today. We'll just attach it to the tractor. We'll get most of it built today. We'll at least have an idea of what we're working with. So let's grab this and let's get it back over there. This piece is a little big, but we can make some cuts to it. <laughs> okay, so here's an idea of what we got going on. These are the tires I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use two of these. They're pretty heavy duty. Um, but we need something kind of tall to get the mower off the ground because I want to be able to drop the mower down if needed, but I want to make sure it's high enough to where we can travel without having issues. So I'm going to put it on this purlin, just like show I'm about to show you. So here's a piece I got cut out. This is obviously upside down. It's going to be turned the other way, but I'm going to put the tires like so. I'm going to weld the tires on here and I like the purlin because if I need any wires or anything run, I can run it through under the purlin. No one will see it. This is where I'll put the deck. We'll have the mower probably about right here somewhere. I'll have this come off, and this will be the end that comes out and goes to the tractor. I even drew a little professional drawing. So here's my professional drawing. Uh, you got the tires there. I just want the bar to go across. That'll be like the deck. That'll be the tongue that comes forward, and I want it to 45, and then this will be where it ties to the tractor. So where's my chalk at? Where's my chalk? Who stole my chalk? Where's the chalk? Oh, here it is. So right here is where I'm gonna put like, uh, so the wheels obviously you won't see them, but that's where they're gonna be. Right here will be like a little metal deck, probably not very much bigger than that. I actually have, I'll have it connect to that spot. And then falling off, this with mower will be under here, like so, we'll have the strings from the weed eater there. I wanna have it cover almost all the deck, definitely in between the tires. And then coming off of that, I want the, like the white, the matting like a real traditional mower has. So that's my idea. Let's weld this together and get started. I hope you guys know that I am no professional uh, metal worker, welder or whatever. I'm just, I just like throwing stuff together, having fun with my kids. 
Um, so will this be the most best thing somebody can do? Absolutely not. But I'm going to make it work. I can promise you that. I'm at least, I'm very strong willed and I'm determined to make things work. So we're going to make this work and why not be the best? If there's anything, so like I said, this will probably be a two-parter. So after you see this video, I'm going to wait before I start the next project. So if you have any ideas, any tips or anything after you see how far we get today, make sure you leave them in the comments so I can read them and make sure I get it done on the next video when we finish it. So uh, let's get this welded together. So it's important to make sure these tires are perfectly straight, facing exactly where you want. You don't want them a little twisted. It'll still work probably, but it'll definitely cause issues. So I got it all measured out. It all looks perfect. So I'm gonna tack these on, look at them again, make sure they look great. If they do, then we'll fully weld them. Let's go. Okay, let's take a look. I'm gonna re-measure it. But it all looks pretty good. I'm gonna make sure it all fits perfect and then we'll get this fully welded. Okay, so we got it welded together. Here's what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. The wheels make it hard to stay. So here's what we got. It'll be just like so. This is kind of the, uh, the starting frame. So then off this side, right here, I'm gonna run another purlin. We're gonna run it off and that'll be what ends up connecting to the tractor. But we gotta make sure we cut a little slit out of this side of the one we're putting next to it so we can still continue to run wires through, make sure we can kind of connect everything together. So I wanna get some measurements on how far away we want this from the tractor, probably a decent distance, and then uh, get that slit cut out and then weld that on there. Okay, so we got it welded together. I got the tires on. Let's see what we got here. Obviously upside down, like I keep saying. But anyways, so we got this all welded together perfect. I got this cut out. We're gonna do 36 inches from this to where it'll tie to their tractor. I put a little 45 in it, so it might be a hair longer than that. But I marked where I want to cut out with the plasma cutter so we can continue running our wires down here into the frame of the tractor. And then our cutter will sit somewhere in that area. Um, so let's get this cut out, a slit cut out for the wires and then weld this to this. And I want to set it up next to the tractor and see how the height's going to be. Do we need to drop the tongue, raise the tongue, go from there. So let's get that cut out and weld it. All right, so it's already starting to look like something. How about that? So here's what I'm thinking. So with nothing done to it, we set it on the tractor like that. It has a little tilt to the front. Um, so I keep saying it, but now maybe you'll kind of get an understand of what it looks like. This will be where the part comes out. I'll have a flap that covers it to make it look like the mower back in that other barn with the head of the spinner here. So. Something I thought of. If I were to drill one hole and this can pivot, that's gonna make this do whatever it wants. It's gonna go back, it's gonna go forward. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to drill a hole to connect it to the tractor and I'm gonna have to drill a hole on the side and the other side to connect it here to not allow this to pivot because if it pivots, this will never look like this. It's always gonna be moving back and forth. So that's my idea how to keep it kind of centered and to just always look like this. So what I'm gonna do to raise this up a little bit, cause I feel like it's leaning a little too much. So I cut out a little piece here. Basically all this is gonna be is just like a connection piece. So this will stay right here. And we'll just weld this to that like so. And that'll kind of give us a little more, it makes it sit a little more flat. I want it to sit forward a little bit. So like so it still does just a hair, very little. I think that's perfect. We don't want too much, but we don't want it leaning back either. So I think I'm gonna weld that little buffer piece on there. And then we need to get the drill. Actually, you know what, before I do that, we need to drill some holes. So uh, let's get some holes drilled on that. Then I'll weld it on there. So let's mark it. All right, so we got the frame kind of built, almost fully finished. I think it looks pretty good. It looks very, very, very similar. It even has, so our traditional coon cutter has the drop down to connect. So it is ours. We got the frame. Perfectly squared 90. This one's quiet, not squared. But when you activate the hydraulics and stuff, it comes out. It'll look almost exactly the same. The only thing left we have to do welding wise is that. We gotta put the cover over the top, connect that together, and then the mat down the front. That's what I'll be doing right here with the mat drop down. And obviously we gotta connect the mower. Um, I'm not as good with electrical, so that's gonna be a little bit of the issue. I need to run to town, get a Weed eater that I think is gonna work. Um, like I said though, I'm not great with electrical, so that's gonna be a struggle. I'm not gonna do anything else to this until this video posts and you run some ideas to me 
Some cure shells thoughts. What do we need to do next? Yes, no, will it not work? Do you not believe in it? If so, tell me, I'm curious what your thoughts, why, why you think it won't work even. So thank you guys for watching. I'm excited to finish this. We'll be finishing this on the next video. I just wanted to get today to get the frame, everything built. I think it looks fabulous. Let me know your thoughts, please, and give the video a thumbs up if you have not, and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm excited to build a lot more things, to paint it, coon color, and then maybe even build a rake and a tether so we could just sell all of our farm equipment and just have the kids do everything. That sounds like a blast. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.